Now, in case you haven't noticed, there is a new book doing the rounds called The Bible. We don't know who wrote it. The author seems to really value his privacy and getting any sort of evidence of his existence seems to be quite difficult at the minute, but the book is a great little story. It's about a bloke with a beard who travels with a gang all over Jerusalem solving all sorts of crimes. It's, it's a bit like Scooby-Doo, but lacking any of the realism that grounds and gives gravitas to a story of a, a talking dog detective and his pothead best friend. But remarkably, it does seem that there are some people who treat the Bible like it's some sort of textbook and they use it to promote all sorts of crazy ideas. Ideas like God laughs at plane crashes or that gays should be executed. But when they are, it must be done humanely because, you know, not all religious fundamentalists are assholes. In fact, so strong is the belief of some of these people that the Bible is a scientific textbook that there are actually preachers out there who are actively campaigning for evolution to no longer be taught in schools. Or at least that's why they're not busy, you know, engaging in their other hobbies. Anyway, as I sat back in my chair today after hours of pondering the important and uniquely brilliant question of is there scientific for evolution science, I fell asleep. And I had a dream, and I dreamed the Bible was real, and in that dream, the only place the Bible could be set is in a council estate in Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is real because I have seen it in a dream called The Bible Does Shameless. Episode 1. The Gallagher family was celebrating Passover in the local pub before Frank, who has had a little too much to drink, seems to feel a little bit depressed and down and starts to make a confession. He goes on to explain how his breath smells like the brown side of a sheet of toilet roll and how his own brothers hate him. Frank's brother Ian tries to cheer him up by telling him that his brothers do love him and he's better off without his crabby wife anyway. And that point about crabby wives suddenly takes on some extra sinister significance when a breaking news flash suddenly appears on the television informing the Gallagher family that Heber, their close friend, had been murdered by his wife Jael with a temp peg and a hammer. The shock of the news leaves Frank feeling sick and he shits himself. As Frank disappears to the toilets to clean himself up, our attention is turned to another family celebrating Passover in Manchester's famous Jerusalem Tavern. Mary and Joseph were also in the Jerusalem Tavern with their son Jesus, as they are every year to celebrate the Passover. But this year something special happened. Mary and Joseph got so unbelievably hammered that when they went home, they forgot that they even had a son. And it took them an entire day of sobering up to realize that they'd left him behind. Left alone in the pub, Jesus thinks about his future. And he talks to Frank's wife, Monica, about what it would take for him to get Frank's blessing to marry Frank's daughter when he was older. Monica goes to see Frank, who is still cleaning himself up before returning quickly with an answer. Ew. Jesus changed his mind. Suddenly Paul, the landlord at the Jerusalem, decided to give a speech about their dear, departed friend Heber. All gathered round to listen, including a young man named Eutychus. However, Paul was a truly boring bastard. And as he droned on, Eutychus fell asleep, fell out the window and died. That event put a swift and Perhaps confusing end to the Passover celebrations and the Gallagher family decided to go home. On the way back, Monica decided to talk dirty to Frank. She had an after party of her own in mind. But Frank did not feel like girding up his loins. He was still upset with the strange new sexual behaviour his wife had been displaying, reminding her of the time she humped a gold necklace. It was going to be some time before he could look at her in the same way again. Monica understood and placed the polished silver model of a rocket back in her pocket before reminding Frank that all will be well in time and people do do stranger things. To highlight the point, she reminded him of the last conversation they heard before leaving the Jerusalem. A conversation in which they found out that the family next door are, how should we put it, closer than most families. Yes, said Frank, I do believe things will be a little bit awkward in their household tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching episode one of The Bible Does Shameless. Now, although I'm aware that the chances of you actually liking what you've just seen are about the same as the chances of me getting an interview with the author of the Bible, I will still say there is a subscribe button somewhere on that page. And if you want to see more of whatever this was, 
then subscribe. If not, bye.